Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I am Zoe and today, as you can expect, we are going to discuss the final five shows of the European leg of the Eras Tour. Taylor Swift just wrapped the European leg last night with her final show in London. She did five nights in London. We're going to discuss all the shows, the surprise songs, the special guests, all that good stuff. It's crazy to think that the European leg of the show is over. It feels kind of like it was just yesterday that she kicked off her tour in Paris. I remember obviously recapping those shows with you all. On the other hand, it feels like it's been a long time that she's been on tour. I mean, it's been almost four months, give or take. It's been a long time. And I can only imagine how, I'm sure Taylor has a m number of emotions going on right now, but um, I, I would imagine she's probably pretty relieved to be done with the leg, just because it's so, it was so long and so time consuming and she was away for so long. Um, and obviously she hasn't seen Travis in a while. So I would imagine that she is ready to get back to the States I'm sure she's, she's already back now, get back to the States and see him and her friends and just, you know, kind of have a bit of normal life for the next couple of months before she goes back on tour in October. But let's go through the five nights, Wembley Stadium. We knew they'd be big nights. We knew they'd be, there would be some fun surprises and there certainly was. So let's go night by night talking about the surprise songs. So we got night one. She brings out Ed Sheeran, which, I mean, we know they're good friends. It's not like so shocking for her to bring out Ed, but pretty cool, pretty fun. And they, of course, perform a mashup of Everything Has Changed, their duet from Red, and Game, their song together from Reputation. And then they did a little bit of uh, Ed's song, Thinking Out Loud. Great mashup. And then for her second, um, her second song, she did King of My Heart and The Alchemy dedicated to Travis 1000%. In fact, there are a lot of people that feel like this night one, these these night one surprise songs were all for Travis and that maybe this had to do with like Taylor and Travis's anniversary or like maybe like the first, that there's some reason that she did such specific uh, Travis songs that first night. People think it might have something to do with like Taylor and Travis's anniversary or something to that effect. So love those. Love all those songs. Excellent. Excellent. Night two, she surprises kind of everybody. Well, it wasn't a surprise, but then it also was a surprise. She did London Boy. She performed London Boy, which we, I think a lot of us felt like she wasn't going to perform just because that song is so clearly about Joe Alwyn and she doesn't love a London Boy right now. So I think but it also, I mean, again, it makes sense. She's in London. If you're going to perform it, this is the place to perform it. Um, and then she did a mashup of Dear John and Sad, Beautiful, Tragic. And I think the juxtaposition of it, I think, was really telling. Like, she loved London Boy, but then she was kind of like, but actually, I don't know. Like, she kind of brought the mood down with the Sad, Beautiful, Tragic, Dear Dear John mashup. I think to kind of show, like, that was a happy song, but, like, it wasn't a happy ending, I guess. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, another great mashup. The theme of these five nights are that every single night, the surprise songs were good, really good. Like no matter what night you went to, it was a song, strong, solid surprise song light up. Night three, I did something bad, excellent. And then she did a mashup of My Boy Only Breaks His Paper Toys, Coney Island. Excellent, like excellent. Um, and I did something bad is such a good song. I, I love that song from Reputation. Fantastic. Okay, night four. Long live with change. You can't go wrong with long live. I'm still sad it's out of the official set list because I think that song is just like so good. But I'm happy that the London crowd or at least one of the nights got to hear long live. And then the Archer and you're on your own kid. Excellent. Like, excellent. You, you can never go wrong if two of your surprise songs feature Long Live and You're On Your Own Kid, you can't go wrong. And then for her final night, night five, she brings out Jack Antonoff to do Death by a Thousand Cuts with some of Getaway Car. Again, A+. And as to be expected, she performs So Long, 
London. Makes perfect sense. Her final show of the tour, her final night in London. The perfect way and like perfect song to close out the surprise songs. Um, again, all five nights are so strong. I honestly don't know if I could pick a night. I think I would have maybe picked night five because I love Death, Death by a Thousand Cuts is one of my favorite songs. And I really, really love So Long London. Like it's one of my favorite songs off of um, TTPD. She also brought out Florence Welch, um, Florence and the Machine, lead singer, singer to perform Florida. Amazing. I also love the song Florida. I feel like that's kind of controversial. I think some people really love it and then some people like do not like it at all. I really like it. So I would have been overjoyed to have gotten that performance at my show. But ultimately, I'm so glad that the shows went off without a hitch. They looked so fun. Everyone looked like they had a great time. Taylor seemed so happy to be performing again and being out there. And it just, I'm I'm just glad that it was it was great. We didn't get a reputation announcement. I think there were a lot of people that thought we would get reputation Taylor's version announcement. I'm actually not that surprised because we're still very much in the like tortured poets department era. Um, and it hasn't been that long since that album has come out. And so it would be kind of weird for her to like immediately pivot to reputation. I sort of feel like my, my best guess would be that at the very end of the tour, like whenever she finishes, I think it's late or early December is when she's done. My guess is that she will then announce reputation for like sometime in the spring. That's kind of my, that's kind of where my brain is at, that, that that's maybe the timeline. Um, we also, a lot of uh, VIP guests, ce- celebrity guests. I, I honestly like don't remember all of them. We know Zoe Kravitz was there with Channing Tatum. Lena Dunham was there. The Heim sisters were there. Um, John Krasinski and Emily Blunt were there. I think Gigi Hadid was there one night. I'm sure there was lots of others that I can't even remember. Like, please comment and let me know if I'm forgetting people because I know that I am. Um, lots, of, lots of celebs, which of course makes sense. So much fun. And then the ultimate gift was at the very end of of the show, of her final night, she announces um, the new music video for I Can Do It With A Broken Heart. And we got this really fun behind the scenes look into the tour through the music video and kind of like her rehearsal and her practicing that performance prior to going out on tour, some little moments of the tour itself and like her kind of behind the stage or under the stage, getting into the cleaning cart to be taken out to the to the stage, all that kind of stuff, um, which was just very fun and very cute. And that's obviously going to be the next single from the album, which makes sense. I feel like that song has been like the biggest quote unquote hit like mainstream hit from the album. So makes perfect sense. But yeah, now Taylor is done with her tour, um, at least again for for now. I don't know. I So the Chiefs actually have a preseason game in Arrowhead in, in Kansas City tomorrow night. Um, will Taylor Swift be going to a preseason game? Maybe, maybe not. I There's a part of me that kind of thinks – I wouldn't be surprised if she spends a little bit of time in New York or something before. I think she will definitely be at the Chiefs home opener September 5th. I also wonder, I don't know exactly like how the Chiefs schedule works. I know that that tomorrow is their final off or final preseason game. I then wonder if they're going to get like a weekend off or something or get some time off. And I wouldn't be surprised if, we see like Travis going to New York or something to spend some time with Taylor in New York or LA. I, I'm assuming New York before then he has to come back to get ready for um, to get ready for the first game. So like so with that being said, I wouldn't be shocked if she's not in Kansas City until until the week of the first game. Um, but yeah, she's going to be back in the States. He obviously is getting ready for the big season. We know that Travis has a lot of exciting projects coming up. This is his TV show that's going to be coming out very soon. He's going to be in a movie. I think he's going to be in Happy Gilmore 2 as well, like featured in that movie, which is hilarious. So he's booked and busy. And honestly, I'm really excited to get to football season again. I'm excited for us to like talk about the games and her appearances at the games. It's just going to be fun. And after recapping, the tour has been great, but 
Um, it's going to be fun to just have something new to discuss, which I'm very much looking forward to. So anyway, let me know all your guys' thoughts on everything that's happened over the last week or so, um, what you think is going to happen these upcoming weeks before the Chiefs' first game, uh, all the things. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.